what is going on everyone welcome to the video i thought i would start this one off with a workout but don't you guys worry because there will be halo top at the end of the video and i will try a new flavor for you guys and let you know what i think but first let's stick with the workout so i wanted to show you guys this particular workout because this is week three on my new program that still doesn't have a name if any of you have a name that you could think of that actually uses my last name, um, the initials like for a routine name, like PFAU, like power, frequency, adaptive. So if you could think of a name with my last name for a new routine, leave it in the comments below because I do want to name it something. Um, but this is, so this is week three on this new routine. And the reason I'm showing it to you guys is because I also showed you week one. So basically week one was I did five sets of three. And week three, I also do five sets of three. So basically, uh, week one was five sets of three at a certain percentage. Week two was five sets of two at a certain percentage. And now week three, even though I'm doing five sets of three again, I bumped up their percentage by two and a half percent. So even though I'm still doing the same reps, I am doing more weight here. And again, I don't want to tell you the exact percentages yet because I do want to wait for a couple of cycles to see if I'm going to stick with it. But that is the premise of the routine. So it goes five sets of three, certain percentage, all straight sets. Next week, five sets of two. Back to five sets of three, but a higher percentage. And then the next week, on week four, I work up to an AMRAP set where I do 100% uh, for an AMRAP, 100% of my current max. And I will take you guys through that work, uh, workout on week four as well. I think I'm going to show you my squat workout since I haven't showed you squats in a while. But that's where I'm coming from. Again, I do not want to give you percentages because they might change. But once I complete two cycles, see how it goes, I'll give you the exact percentages. But for now... Five to the three week one, five to the three week three, but at two and a half percent higher. And then here I'm just doing a quick back down set. Forgot exactly what percentages this was, but it was for 10 reps. Um, but what I actually wanted to discuss in this video is leaving your fitness comfort zone. Now, what I mean by that is I want to start off by saying no one is forcing us to try to build muscle. No one's forcing us to try to lose fat. No one's forcing us to diet and do all these things. These are things that we are bringing upon ourselves. We are choosing to do this. And if we don't want to do this, no one's going to stop us either. And we could find something else to do and find a new hobby. So building muscle and losing fat, although I don't want to say it's complicated, it, both of them to a certain extent do require you to make yourself a little bit uncomfortable. Let me give you an example and just tell you like what I mean. So when you're bulking, typically you start off very excited, you're very eager to get in the gym, it's very easy to eat, you have an appetite, but what happens is like two months in, maybe three months in, that appetite is no longer as strong as it was in the beginning, eating becomes more difficult as your calories get higher, you see that you add a little bit more fat than you were hoping, and now you're a little bit unhappy with how you look, perhaps maybe your, even your skin is breaking out from the extra calories, and now after only two to three months, you already want to cut because you're kind of uncomfortable with this certain amount of body fat. You're uncomfortable with how much you have to eat. And now after those that two-month bulk, you already start cutting. And now when you're cutting, the same thing happens. It starts out easy because you just went from not liking to eat, so it's nice to eat less. You still have your strength from your bulk. So the first couple of months go, it goes pretty well. But then after that, you start getting hungry. You start losing some strength. And you're still not as lean as you wanted to be. And now you're at the same point that you were when you're bulking. You, you, rather than push yourself, you decide to go back to bulking. So when you bulked, you didn't go as far as you wanted to. And then when you cut, you didn't go as far as you want to. And people do this, this back and forth where they, they don't go all the way on either of them. And it, it basically results in them making subpar progress because they weren't willing to make themselves comfortable. So the truth of the matter is, if you're bulking, there is going to come a point where you are uncomfortable. You might be slightly uh, fatter than you want. And you're most certainly probably going to be a little bit tired of eating. But the only way to continue adding muscle at that point is to continue forcing yourself to eat. And if you don't want to do that, you're really just not going to be able to make any progress. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Doug Miller, but he was known for a couple of years ago. He went on a four-year masking phase. So four years. Can you imagine that? Six months it seems like a long time to people. He did it for four years. So... I'm not saying you need to do four years, but if you're actually serious at putting on a substantial amount of muscle, you'd be wise to stay in a caloric surplus for a minimum of six months, and really the longer the better. The longer you stay in it, the more muscle you're going to put on. And you are going to have to accept the fact that it might become difficult. You might not want to eat. You might be slight, you might put a little more, more fat than you want, but the more important thing is to push yourself because like I said, this isn't supposed to be easy. We're choosing to do this, and sometimes it requires to get more comfortable. 
I mean, it sometimes it requires to make yourself uncomfortable. Same thing with losing fat. You set a certain body fat percentage. You want to be 8%. You get to 11% and you're, you're tired, you're hungry, you're losing some strength. And suddenly, you, rather than keep cutting to 8%, you stop soon again and you go back into a bulk. And the truth is, if you want to be 8% body fat, it's not going to be easy. You're not going to get there eating a ton of food. You're not going to be doing no cardio. And you're not going to be gaining strength. It takes sacrifices. It does take pushing yourself. And it does take it does take being a little bit uncomfortable. And the reason I'm talking about this now is because I get a lot of people asking me questions about like bulking and cutting and how they complain that they're hungry when they're cutting. They complain that they can't eat when they're bulking. And they've only been doing either of them for like two months. And I tell them like if you want, that's what it's going to take. I mean, there's no way around it. So if this is what you want to do, if you have a goal in mind, you're going to have to push yourself through it. And if not, you're going to have to, you're going to keep going back and forth and you're just not, and you're going to be shortchanging your progress. But I did want to just uh, discuss that briefly. The workout footage is wrapping up here. Stay tuned for the rest of the video where I do a quick little hail top review. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next clip and then I will see you in the next video. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the workout. Uh, since every video has to have some halo top, this one will be no different. Today we're going to try chocolate covered banana. This one actually has less calories than the other ones. I'm not really sure why. I opened it up, it actually looks pretty good. There's chocolate on top. I didn't put it in the microwave yet. It looks a little icy. So I'm gonna do that and then I will try it and let you guys know what I think. All right, so here's what it looks like. Chalk covered banana. Alright, this might sound weird, but it kind of tastes like chocolate covered banana. It's pretty good. It's not as creamy as the other ones. If you like banana, you'll like it. If you don't like banana, you definitely won't like it. It's not my favorite flavor, but it's definitely pretty good. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. It's definitely one of the more watery flavor. It's not as creamy as you know, the pumpkin or the cookies and cream or even the birthday cake. But I am going to eat this now. This will wrap up the video. I'm actually going to be doing a Halo Top giveaway on my Instagram in the next couple weeks, so be on the lookout for that. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.